Hi, my name is Julian Grimm, and today we're gonna cheat just a little bit, just a little bit, okay? Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how to comp your drums into the ultimate drum take, yeah! And when it comes to editing drums, I would recommend you stopping right there. I wouldn't recommend this next step that I'm taking right now. But sometimes you might have some timing problems with your drums. Maybe the drum recording wasn't perfect. Maybe the drummer wasn't quite there or maybe something went wrong and you have some timing problems. I don't really like when people over edit drums and take out the human feeling out of drums. But if you want to make them perfect in Ableton Live 11, you can and it's really easy now with the new track linking feature. But you know, perfection is overrated and humans are not machines yet. But as you can see here, Toby, he's almost a machine because he's really on time. These little discrepancies here, they're really minor and they don't cause any issues and they're actually pleasant to human ears because they make everything more unpredictable and more natural sounding, you know? It's really nice to have these imperfections. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to fix that and put these things on the grid. I've made a video about that in the past and you can check it out somewhere up here, but in Ableton Live 11, now this is easier than ever and that's because of these little chain symbols right here. Remember them from the last video? Track linking, right? If this little chain symbol is up here on your tracks, this means that they're linked. You can unlink them by right clicking, pressing unlink track and you can link them back, right clicking, link tracks. You see, it links all the selected tracks, doesn't link groups, it just ignores it really. So you can have tracks within groups, within groups, within groups that are linked together. It doesn't matter. But yeah, now you have all your tracks linked and that's what we need to edit the drums. And to do that, we have two ways, the old school way and the new exciting way. Well, let's go for the old school first. So the old school way is cool, not only because you don't stretch your audio, so you don't degrade your sound, but it's also cool because you have more control on leaving a little bit of the timing discrepancy. So even though your drums are a little bit more aligned, they're still natural sound, you know? You can leave some of these imperfections in and still time align them a little bit more and just fix issues. So the old school way is really good for that. And I've done this before in my channel, but I'll show you now. And now that the tracks are linked, it's super easy. Cause you see, if I unlink the tracks, just for a second, before you had to select all the clips and edit them together. You know, you had to select them all, delete this, select them all, chop this here, and if by accident, if you lost your selection and you started doing this, oh no, I only moved this one. It was a little bit messy. It worked, but it was a little bit messy. But now select them all, right click, link tracks. Now they're linked forever. Whatever you do to one happens to all of them. You see, all of them. The way that I like to time align drums, it's quite loose. You see, the first kick is not right on. So what I do is I select the first kick and I drag it forwards a little bit like this. Now it's on. And now I can just check here this cut to see if it's the best that it can be. See, I, I don't want to overlap it like this. Now we don't want to leave any gaps. So we can even zoom in a little bit and just make it really nice and crossfade it here like this. You see, this is cool. You see, this next section is pretty much in time up to here and here he gets ahead of time for a while. So what I can do is choose the section that I think it's a little bit too ahead like this. You see, this one is on time again right now, this one in the end of my selection. So I can select this and drag it forwards to be a little bit more on time. I can drag it a little bit back here. There you go, see? how much more on time that is. Now again, you go back here and you check your fades. You gotta be careful with this, yeah? You gotta be careful not to double your hits. This hit is duplicated. Usually I time everything to the kick because it's easier and I think the kick is the most important uh, element to be on time. But you see this is overlapping so I can just drag this back a little bit. Ableton created the fades for me and now it's gone. And this is all on time now. We have the other section here. Again, let's see, right there, that's good. This is on time, this is on time. Starts to get a little bit ahead here. I can cut just this little section right here. Put it forward, fade, fade, see? And I don't have 
too many cuts. I can delete this beginning here, we don't need this. And I don't have too many cuts, and that way I can keep some of the human feel in there and still put things more to the grid. The bigger chunks you have and the least cuts that you make, the better it's gonna sound, the more natural it's gonna sound. So you really gotta be careful not to overdo it, yeah? So you could go crazy and just time align note by note, just go like, oh, this note's off, I time align this one, this note's off, I time align this one, and then this note's off, and I time align this one as well. And you could do that. But then the drums are not gonna sound like they were played by a person. They're just gonna sound they were MIDI drums or whatever, something quantized, you know? So let's just undo this. Let's listen to how this sounds. Let's turn on the click to see if it's on time. That's on time and you still have a little bit of human feel in there, which I really like. So that's the old school way, right? And it's really easy to do with the tracks linked because everything moves together now. And we can use the track link to erase everything that I've done so I can show you the next new, cool and exciting method to time align your drums. So now everything is linked, right? So all the edits happen together. So what happens when I click on these tracks? You see this little option menu down here, you can turn on warp and that's the new cool method because if you turn on warp let's use the algorithm beats after all drums are nothing more than beats of yesteryears am i right so we turned on warp turned on beats and now if you see every time we click one of the tracks right here it changes down here as well to the corresponding track so let's use again the kick right to quantize we can even drag this to make it bigger and easier to see. Let's make it huge, like this. So before we start, I gotta warn you, this is a dangerous method, because this gives you the possibility to make everything super perfect with no cuts at all. It might be what you want, but you're gonna take out that human feel and it's not gonna sound as cool as a real drummer playing the song, you know? So use this new method with moderation, I would say, okay? As you can see, we can zoom in here and really see those kicks right here. You can see these little arrows here on top. Ableton automatically detects transients on your track, right? And if you click one of these transients, it becomes a warp marker. And this warp marker can be stretched. And if you look back up here where all the tracks are, because they're linked, they're all being stretched together in perfect correlation to each other. You can really time align your multi-tracks with no phase issues because they're all linked together. And this is really, really cool and really easy to do. So let's make this big again, like this. I'm gonna go a little bit extreme now so you guys have an idea how powerful this method is. You could go nuts and just create a warp marker for every hit like this. You see, this is a kick, 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 and you could drag it. Drag this one here, drag this one here, just snap everything to the grid like this. See, snap, 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 snap. This doesn't sound very natural. Sounds fine, but I don't like it. And our brains subconsciously, they don't like it. So let's undo that, right? The way that I like to work this, it's the same way that I worked with the big chunks before when we were doing the chopping, remember? It's the same exact thing. We're gonna work in big chunks and we're gonna try to keep the warp markers to the minimum, okay? So again, let's zoom and choose a section that we wanna work with. Let's say I wanna go from here to here. So I put a warp marker there in the beginning and I put a warp marker, let's say here in the end and I zoom in to see this better. Okay, so this one is out of time, right? But this one's not so bad. So I'll put a warp marker here and do this. And you see everything goes a little bit more on time. You see these ones, not so much in time. See, a little bit, this one is, this one's fine. So let's put a warp marker there, right? Push it forward, do you need to push it more? Put another warp marker, push it. You see, everything's falling into time a little bit better, but just don't, don't start going nuts like this. Don't start, don't, don't start just putting warp markers on every note. Just let it slide, just ignore it. It's fine, it's fine. It's not perfectly in time, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. See? It's in time, it's in time, it's in time. It's good enough, it's good enough. This one could be like this. Oh, it's good, it's good. This one's a bit, oh. Uh, it's good, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. No worries, no worries. There we go. 
And this is the end. And this is pretty much in time. We have this one that's not in time. We can just choose these two right here to lock it in and put it forwards where it should be. And if you listen to it, See, it's in time and there's no cuts, which is also cool. Like there's people that advocate for the cuts because it doesn't stretch the time. There's people that advocate to the stretching the time because it doesn't cut your audio. It's up to you. What do you think it sounds best, you know? In lives, warp algorithms are pretty good. I don't know if beats is better for natural drums or if you should just go with Complex Pro. Probably it also sounds fine. It's up to you, but um, yeah, that's it. That's how you warp multi-track drums in Ableton. And of course, if you want to like warp the toms, for example, you can click on the tom track, you can zoom in, you see all the warp markers from the kicks are here already. But let's say I want to fix this tom hit. There you go, you fix the tom hit. This is really simple. It's really nice. I'm, I'm still debating myself which method I'm going to use for my own songs next. I'm not sure. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video because in the last video, I showed you how to get the ultimate drum take. But in this video, I showed you how to get the ultimator, even better drum take that's on time. And it's so cool. <sighs> Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if I'm moving around a little bit and I'm a bit excited. I've been stuck in this flat for a while, so uh, you have to bear with me. On the next video, I'm gonna focus on MIDI drums and drum plugins. If you can't record real drums right now, you can still do really cool drums in Ableton Live 11. So I'm gonna focus on that on the next video. And I hope you guys like this one. If you like what I do, press all the things that help me around me in this world. And I see you next time. Bye.